Good evening, everybody. I'm Barbara Popovich, Executive Director of CAN TV, and I am delighted to welcome Representative Ken Duncan of the 5th Legislative De hey. District, Thank Illinois. Thank you for having me, Ms. Barbara. Great to have you. Great, great being here. Wonderful friend of CAN TV, and always welcome to come and talk to you, which is what this show's about. This is a live call in program. You see the number on the bottom of your screen. Many of you know this. You can give a call. These are electronic office hours, right? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, a politician's work never ends. <laughs> right, right. And we are very fortunate to have a lovely young woman and a very handsome young man here who are Representative Duncan's children. So great audience sitting here watching us here today and Sylvia on the telephone. So we want you to give Sylvia a call and she will put you through to Representative Duncan so you can ask your questions and let's have a really robust show here with what you want to know from Representative who's dozen years now in the legislature. Wow, that is the case. Yeah. And uh, very, very on honored and humble experience uh, to be a state representative. Uh, and to listen to constituents and to learn such a great deal of uh, issues and intelligence on how it is and what it is that we should be doing. But let me say this before we get started. Uh, Barbara, you have been, let me tell you, Can TV audience, this woman to my right, your left, <laughs> is one of the staunchest, no nonsense, clear on the issues of communication and public access here in the state of Illinois that would make you oh so proud and very, very much so appreciative of how it is that Can TV is still existing with such clarity, with a high level of, of uh, determination to give all audiences a voice publicly. So thank you so much. Well, thank and you. Uh, I mean, you should see her fighting with Comcast and AT and T, all these these big powerhouse multinational uh, corporations to have their uh, commitment and communication uh, coming back here to this com community. This is a community. It's nowhere near a business. Right. And it's a valued community. So I want to thank you and your team. Well, thank you. And I, we are the accumulation of so many voices out there. And I appreciate what you said. I'm a conduit, if anything. But you know we have a hot topic and a hot guest when we get calls in the first five minutes. And we have a caller. Caller, what is your question for Representative Duncan? Oh, yeah, I know there was just a debate between uh, Governor Quinn and Rauner about, but uh, one of the biggest <coughs> issues they talked about was who can best serve the African-American community. And I know, obviously, you probably have what candidate you would support picked out, but I wonder what, when it comes to the African-American community, kind of what are the top issues of concern that you think that they would have to address as governor? I think uh, yesterday's debate was a robust debate that uh, warranted a lot of responses and, well, needed responses, I'll say. Um, clearly, there's an issue of access to economic opportunity at all levels. There is a real, real challenge in, uh, for any candidate, be it Browner or Quinn, and us, me, even in the General Assembly, to make sure that we come up with equal funding for every citizen here in this state every kid, every family uh, at the elementary and secondary education level. And so yesterday that was talked about a bit, but now really the governor in his levels of uh, executive order uh, and or executive decision making really comes from whatever the House and Senate can put before him to sign, amend, or veto. So it's, on, it's incumbent upon us in the House and in the Illinois Senate to do the right thing we're coming up with an equal foundational funding level for all students, all children, all families here in the state of Illinois and not have one side of the state funded students at one financial level and, and another part of the state or another part of the city for that matter um, do the exact same thing. So that's the second big issue. The other one is incentives being created to create and start new businesses in the black community. And if you look at some of our areas on the, on the west side and some of our areas uh, that are historically black on the south side, the biggest chasm is that of academic, excuse me, economic access to banks loaning money for small and medium-sized businesses to, to get started, to come up with uh, innovative dollars to just give people a chance. I often tell folk or make mention that Donald Trump, failed several times in his, uh, many times in his venture, uh, capitalistic approaches, but he always had the benefit of the doubt with banks and investors 
putting money into some of his ideas. And they were, they were just that, mere ideas. What may work in New York or Florida may not necessarily work in California or Chicago. But they give him, they being the financial institutions, give them him that opportunity. And so that's, you know, the economics, the access to quality education and funding. And all of that would mitigate some of the crime issues that you've been hearing about in some of our isolated communities in, our, in this great city of ours. So I want to do a couple of things. First of all, thank you, caller. And remind everybody, you've got a call-in number on your screen, 738-1060. You've got Rep, Rep Duncan here for 20 more minutes, so call now. <laughs> but before we go further, I want to show folks what a challenging district you have. In looking at this map, this purple long line here shows the city. So why don't you real quick explain both the demographics and what area this encompasses. Yes. Thank you. Very good question. I'm in the, obviously in the 5th District, and my district goes, it starts really from Division and LaSalle Street. It goes up to Michigan okay, Avenue. Up here, down here. Oh, yes. So I have all those Rush Street bars. Up at the all, top. Okay. Yes, all that. I have go the, down here. go down Rush Street. Keep going. Okay. Now, you, you're down at Michigan Avenue in the South Loop. I have the Hyatt Hotel, Millennium Park. I have all of that. I have a portion of, then I have Bronzeville, where I live, the Washington Park community, I have Grand, uh, Greater Grand Crossing, as well as the South Shore. So I literally go from the Gold Coast to the Soul Coast of Chicago. Right. So, so there's a lot going on. And I want to get back to the caller's question in some respect and how you responded to it. Because when you think about equity and you think about the importance of jobs, I know you've had a long-term commitment in your legislative life to capital projects that are job creators locally. So why don't you speak to that a little bit and tell us what you've been doing. Yes, I am a big fan of making sure that we get an incredible, you get an incredible return on investment of public monies. Um, and I have to emphasize that sometimes uh, to myself as well as my colleagues that we work for you, the public. And it's your dollars that we talk about dist uh, dis distributing out in the various need areas. And capital investment plays a major role. Uh, for example, we need a 21st century can television studio <laughs> that needs to speak to the new technology digitally as well as technologically and range-wise wide for all of us to enjoy. We benefit from this public access because of the legislature, politicians like myself, forced, they didn't volunteer to do it, but based off of the advocacy of Barbara and her staff, Erica and Tiffany and others across this state who believe and know like you and I do and appreciate public access television. An investment in public access and its capital infrastructure endeavor is should be a part of our nomenclature. And it certainly is going to be a part of my advocacy down in Springfield. Um, we also want to make sure that with our infrastructure that our roads and bridges are safe, that they're not collapsing, that they're not sinking. We want to make sure that our, our schools have the needed investment dollars from us, the, the public, to make sure that the, the roofs are not leaking, the air is working, and that the building is not falling down. And what that speaks to is us having the utmost respect and positive regard for our young people, our investment. And we need to do that right today. So th those are just sort of some brief snapshots on what it is that our capital investment uh, should mean, as well as some of our, our financial, excuse me, our museums and our, and our cultural institutions here that make up such a wonderful and uh, diverse city that we have, um, and many other capital improvement needs that we have to invest in, uh, in, in within an aging infrastructure here in the city and state. Right, and make sure people get the training and the job experience yes, they need that's critical. To, to help with that these is projects. Critical. We've got a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question for State Rep. Ken Duncan? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good. I want to know why do all these things be addressed only when it's election? <laughs> and uh, what do you think about the racial profiling for our police and what happened to the black guy, the black boy that got shot in St. Louis? Thank you for your question, caller. You know, the, the um, racial profiling by anyone at any level is wrong. And it, it's so 1950s and 60s. And we at the, in the General Assembly uh, passed legislation 
to address it by having uh, police officers in various districts across the state mandate that they um, uh, reference who they stopped and why they stopped them. Uh, so that's an issue that even Senator, then State Senator Barack Obama had a big hand in, along with State Representative Monique Davis, in pushing for the abomination of, or trying to, to push for the abomination of racial profiling. You know, some of this is a learned behavior, and we have to culturally move ourselves out of that mentally. But it's going to take people like yourself as well to help educate young people, police officers, even uh older adults that we're in a new time and racial profiling of anyone is wrong-headed and it's going to really lead to our nation's detriment if we don't get a, a handle on it today as it relates to talking about politics right about now well this is the season where it's talked about <laughs> unfortunately uh news media doesn't cover politicians or what they have to say scandals they so, like scandals. yeah they like scandals <laughs> they love scandals that's why the, the, the television series is so popular but most people are not paying attention to uh, some of the, the wonderful things that many of my colleagues in the House and Senate are accomplishing, such as Can TV investment, making or forcing some of the major telecommunications companies invest a percentage of their resources, their revenue, to public access television. We also talk, uh, we mandate that the public utilities, Commonwealth Edison, Amron, Exelon Corporation, People's Gas, that they invest in the light heat program, the weatherization dollars, so they can help those individual families who are struggling to pay their electric bill in the winter time, struggling to pay their heating bills because the cost can be a bit high uh, if your, your place is not efficient. So there are a multitude of things that we do down there very successfully, but it doesn't get the media traction in mainstream television. But thank God for our public access television that we're able to talk about these issues. You're able to learn. We're able to share with each other as well. So, um, by the way, us in the House of Representatives at the state level, we campaign every day, all the time, or talk about issues because we run every two years. So I think it's a combination of you paying more attention, you being inundated with all of these uh, political commercials that people are just be becoming pretty exhausted in listening to, and it's just sort of, it's a part of the, the culture of, of the season today and it's what people want to talk about. But those who live in my district tend to know who, me, who I am and, and some of my issues because I'm mailing to them, I'm talking with them, I'm meeting with them on a continuum. So um, all of us don't fit the political stereotype. All right. Well, we the call. I knew. I knew the calls were going to roll in. So we got to get some. Calls All right. Okay. In I'll, I'll keep it right. short. All right. So we do have a caller on the line. Okay. What is your question for Rep. Duncan? All right. Thanks for taking my question. Mm -hmm. um, both my parents are retired and they're on a fixed income. And I'm curious: is are there any programs in place right now to reduce the cost for uh, prescription drugs? That's an excellent question. You know, the actually un, under Governor Blagojevich, he came up with a prescription drug program. Uh, to help bulk, balkanize the purchase of prescription drugs because they have increased. They have certainly skyrocketed. And he, we looked at, at, at drugs and how they were being sold in Canada versus the United States, for example. Mexico. Uh, Mexico mm -hmm. uh, and Europe and why there was such a huge disparity of cost for the same, pretty much the same prescription drugs. And so... What I, you know, I'm not an authority on prescription drug costs. That's why uh, it's important for people like yourself to have the 1-800 number, which I don't know now, but you can certainly reach out and uh, call my number uh, and talk with the Depart Illinois Department on Aging. They are the authorities on that, as well as the Department of Family Health and Family Services. But I will start with the Illinois Department on Aging. You can always call my office. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that number here. Oh, there you go. Phone seven seven three three six three one four one one. Yes, it is. Give that office yes. a call. Hopefully, that was quick enough. Let's yes. do that one more time. Seven seven three three six three fourteen eleven. All right. <laughs> so good. Should we get another caller? In? Why not? All right. Do we have another caller? We got another caller. Caller, what is your question for Rep. Duncan? Yes. Good evening. Actually, I have two questions. Uh, the first question, are you concerned about uh, the campaign spending in this year's governor's race? It seems like it is in the millions and millions, close to $20 million. And then number two, um, 
for people to get out and vote, because voting numbers are always down, what are you trying to do to get to, to draw off the interest, get people out in, in November? Thank well, you. Two, two very good questions. Campaign financing is a major issue here in our state, in this country. And I think the biggest, if you look at the biggest cost of campaign finance or where the money is going to, it's to communicate with folk like yourself. It's media. The major networks are charging absorbent amounts to run ads and commercials. And politicians are running around begging, cajoling, trying their best to convince, cutting deals with major donors to finance their campaign so they can pay the media. But yet the criticism often comes from the mainstream media of campaign finance and the problem of money, of major corporations investing in politicians like myself and others who then feel as if they're somewhat beholden or they per it's perceived that they're per beholden, and some actually are, because they've donated and contributed and made such a major investment in their respective campaign. And so one thing can, that can stop this uh, almost next to dead in its tracks is to, to deal with the overabundance of costs in the mainstream media and maybe in reinvest in, in public access television so we can have this as a forum Why do I love to talk this about. Guy? Well, look at it. This is, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't pay anything to be here. That's right. right. We're, we made the major conglomerates who set up shop here to do business to make money from our consumers here in the state mm -hmm. to provide resources for entities such as public access television. Mm -hmm. But if you want, if I want to talk to my constituents on a television, I'm in the upwards of two hundred thousand plus dollars, up into the millions of dollars to communicate on a regular basis, just to talk with you on issues that we should be talking about with you anyway. But because most of us are not wealthy or well financed in such a way, we have to go out and solicit the banking industry, the insurance industry, the unions, and a host of other special interests who look forward to us having some level of commitment or at least a dialogue with them on their respective issues. And so that the campaign needs to start with where we're spending the money. Now, as it relates to get out the vote, this is a, a grand opportunity as, as, as any to talk about the responsibility of all of us citizens here having to do the right thing to or needing to do the right thing by getting out there and being educated with your vote and placing the vote. It makes no sense here in this country where you have to try to convince people to do what they know they should be doing, given the bloodshed that was spilled all across this, this, the North and the South amongst different ethnic groups and people to get out the vote, how people in other countries in the Far East and the Far South and West, where they are prohibited or the voting methods there are inferior, very corrupt, and or are suppressed. So we have no excuse not to vote, not to do the right thing, not to get out there on our own volition and learn the issues, talk with the candidates, go to a forum, and get out there and tell our friends and our family and our neighbors to come out and vote for what you perceive as is the right candidate to best represent you and the public. Great. Uh, do we have a call, Sylvia? Okay. We we have another caller, so we're time is beginning to run time out, but let's take moving. another call. Caller, what's your question for Rep. Duncan? Uh, good evening. I uh, just wanted to say hello to the distinguished uh, state rep. Uh, I'm an old neighbor here, so I uh, oh. just wanted to wish him well in his uh, career as a public servant. Well, thank you. Now, what is your name? Uh, Brown from over on Evergreen Street. Okay, Brian, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good. My pleasure. You're from the near north side. Right, Bill Brown. Bill and Brown. Mr. All right, Mr. Hey, Bill Brown. Brown. Hey, long time no, no see. Is Mr. Brown going to get out and vote? Let's uh, find uh, out. Uh, Bill Brown, he knows better. He knows <laughs> I'll jump through this can TV and put him in the headlock. Hey, the next time Bill you want to run for state rep, I'm there, I mean, uh, state senator, I'm there with you. I've, I haven't seen you in a while, Bill. Great, know, great hearing while. I'm doing fine, though. You have one of those hard questions for me? I know you do. Oh, sir. Uh, <laughs> Bill Brown, that's a blast from so the past. The answers, but I, I'm, I'm gonna take it easy on you tonight, Ken. All right, thanks, man. Listen, look at. Yes, listen, sir. Do you need my phone number? You know how to look for me. Here we go. Give it we'll to him. Here we go. On the, on the... 773-363-1411. Got it. Thank you. All Come right. on, Bill. All right, Bill. It'll be great, great to see you. Thank you for the call. 
I think it would be helpful because you are a leader in the Legislative Black Caucus, and we touched on this early on about some issues you see as important. Oh, I think another call might be coming in. So let's real quick just okay. give a couple of bullet-pointed issues for the Legislative Black Caucus this next session in Springfield. Well, the Legislative Black Caucus is has really progressed into uh, being the, the biggest voice for not just the Black Caucus, but for all citizens. If all citizens, black, brown, red, yellow, green, purple, are benefiting, all of us are benefiting. That means we're all winning. If you're so, most of the big issues that we cover, some of our landmark issues have been stopping the mayor's mandatory minimum sentencing um, bill, which was which was would have taken us back another ten years. Quite frankly, a lot of the expungement laws that you are. Are, that people benefit from, or some relatives, or people in this state who really need a second chance. There's also a, the, a what they call the movie industry, the film industry. We saw all these big movie trucks and television shows, commercials being taped. The Black Caucus reignited that about 10 years ago. I led it, but it was the Black Caucus that really helped push for that. Got some tax cuts. Oh, tax incentives for companies, major corporate, excuse me, major corporations by way of major motion pictures mm -hmm. to come here and set up shop and do business. They don't get the tax credit in, or incentive unless they have minorities participating, women and, and, you know, Hispanic and blacks, or if they're not spending money here in our great state. So they have to spend money, a great deal of money, and invest in our, our labor infrastructure here and participate in the state of Illinois. And we consider giving them a tax incentive. So it's worked out very, very well for a lot of our citizens. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of just, and we're also looking at the mass, mass overhaul of how it is that we fund education. Those are big issues, and we played a huge role in making sure that the Affordable Care Act, or better known as the Obamacare, passed both chambers. So that's just a snapshot of five or six items that the Black Caucus certainly has taken an active lead on. And guess what? We're not done. We want to make sure that all of our citizens here in the state of Illinois can uh, receive equal and public benefit from its government. So let Sylvie, how many calls we got waiting? Two? Okay. So let's take two calls real quick because we're going to run out of time. So caller, what is your question for State Rep. Ken Duncan? Go ahead. Caller? Hello? Go ahead. Hey, um, I'm Brianna. I'm actually a constituent of Ken hey, Duncan. Brianna. Hey, how's it going? Good. And I met with you a couple, like a month ago, um, asking you about your support for the raise incre increase in minimum wage. And you stated that you did not think that that was the answer for a raise in minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if you changed your stance on that. Since Okay. Well, okay. Go ahead. And Brianna, Thank you as, for the as call. I as I met with you in the group, um, certainly the minimum wage is one very small, small piece of the overall transformation of putting people in a position to have a a respectful wage being earned here in this state and in this country. Quite fr frankly, I think the legislation that we have in this state doesn't go far enough. It's a, it's a mere dollar and a half, maybe two dollars. It gets up to a, to 1090, if, I'm, if I can recall, I think you, you know the specific, but whereas the city is trying to go from up to $15. I don't think it goes far enough, and I think it's sort of a, a real sort of, uh, sort of a pacifist approach towards saying, hey, hey look, you know, um, have not, here are a couple of dollars, shut up for the next five to seven years until you can talk about something else. I think what we need to be doing as politicians is looking for real economic solutions on how it is that we can raise people out of their poverty levels and that's on, a, on such a grand scale. And so I think that would really stop the debate on further investment of our human capital by way of job training and incentives to get people, really put people to work, and investment in some of these black and brown communities where, where too many of us disproportionately are on uh, um, living on minimum wage. I don't see minimum wage as being the answer because I, I think it's a it's a have and have not scenario. Um, but I have not said I was not going to vote for it. I just don't think that is the panacea. I think it's sort of almost a trendy issue right now that we need to get past. All right. We are running out of time. So those of you that are still on the line, please call Rep. Duncan at his office, 773 
363-1411. I am sorry we couldn't get to more of you. We needed an hour with him, it's evident. Want to really thank you for coming. Barbara, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I loved our audience tonight, two beautiful young people. And I want to thank Sylvia for taking the phone calls. Please tune in every Wednesday at 7 for Political Forum, which is your live opportunity to talk to our elected officials who work seven days a week, all hours, to try to address the concerns in this state and city. So thank you, and we will see you next week.